Welcome to Payne on Politics, a podcast where host Dr. Gregory Payne of Emerson College sits down with fellow experts to discuss the current state of politics, public opinion, and global affairs. In a world growing increasingly complex, communication and critical thinking is key. This only makes the Emerson motto, expression necessary to evolution, more true. Hello, this is Gregory Payne, the Chair of Communication Studies, the first communication department in the United States at Emerson College, and this is Payne on Politics. As many of us know, we look at sports as a bridge, and many of us talk about sports diplomacy. In the program here, Professor uh, Anderson, as well as Professor Steinberg, teach sports as soft power. And today we're going to be featuring a rising star in sports communication who's just won several awards. He's going to talk to us about those. But he is someone when we were launching the program and actually had a picture yourself at Emerson event, I saw Sam and his mother, and he's been inquisitive and always asking questions about how we can move this forward. So Sam, you've helped move this program forward. Welcome to Paint on Politics. Thank you. Those are words that, well, they're very humbling to hear. So thank you. It's good to be here. You know, the one thing I would say with regard to you, Sam, is you are someone who's never content with the present. You are constantly pushing to the future. And I think that's part of what we have here in the team in communication studies. When you came to Emerson, first of all, you had other opportunities. Why did you come for sports at Emerson College? Uh, Well, this is my first tour when I was looking at colleges when I was in high school. And I came here and it's right in the middle of downtown Boston. And I love the environment of the city. Um, Also, Boston is probably the sports capital of the United States. And that's a big pull that all the teams in Boston are perennial championship contenders and that the students are right in in the middle of it um, when The teams have parades. Emerson students are covering that when um, at Emerson, every opportunity student sees Um, like when ESPN came here for Stephen A. Smith in 2018 or when Adrian Wojnarowski from ESPN came here to the podcast in front of our students in our gym and our students interviewed them. The opportunities here just seem to be so top notch early on compared to other schools where you'd have to wait until your junior or senior year to even get a sniff right right when you're 18 years old you can do whatever you want here and that's that was clear and obvious to me well you know when myself spencer kimball lee stacy al jaffe and others put this program together what we wanted to do was to distinguish it from syracuse and other places basically having an immersive experience so we wanted you to be connected with what we call that emerson mafia you're going to be a very powerful emerson mafia period but as you mentioned those other people we had sam Preston of course, who's a general manager in Oklahoma. Uh, My question, Sam, is when you've had those experiences, how open have those alums been to providing some input as well as ideas about how you can move forward? The Emerson alum are very interested in helping move forward the legacy of the school. Um, it's part of help, what helped me get an internship right now. Um, I just got an internship at Nesson. And I'll be on the Red Sox broadcast through the entire summer. Congratulations. Thank you. Um, and one of, the, um, one of the producers who hired me, who interviewed me, is an Emerson alum. And I had a friend who used to go here that I was on a set with um, on one of the productions that I'm a part of. I asked him who to, who to talk to. Um, he gave me someone's email. And then without me asking, he gave a glowing recommendation for me. And then I walk into the interview... This alum already knows who I am, already checked out my resume, knows that I went to Emerson and I could tell that that recommendation and that I go to Emerson played such a huge part in my consideration. So it's it weighs heavily that Emerson mark on you. It it goes with you in the best way. Well, that's one reason we're very excited to have Marcia Delagostina conducting and working with students like yourself and graduate students in the new MA program in SportsCom with Sports Dialogues, which feature Emerson alums. One thing I wanted to do is shift gears a bit, Sam, because a couple of years, even, I guess it was actually the last trip that Emerson took prior to COVID. You were among a group of people that went to Barcelona, to Blancarna, and then, of course, we expanded that. Can we talk a little bit about that particular trip and what you did when you went to Barcelona and Europe? Well, that trip was also one of the reasons that I came here, because... I'm a massive world football fan, and I learned about the, the, that trip when I toured here, and I learned that I could go to Barcelona as a trip here, and that was something that I simply couldn't refuse. And so I went right as a freshman because I wasn't going to wait. Um, and it was the last trip before the world shut down, March 2020. I was in a stadium with 100,000 people on March 7th, 2020, which is incredible to think about now. But we went to Blancarna. We uh, networked with students that go to Blancarna. Uh, met Enrique, who used to work for Barcelona, the club. Um, and we recently went back to meet students who used to go here 
at Emerson and are doing Blanc Carina for the semester. Um, connected with my old friend Chris Williams, who used to go here as well, who also just got an internship I at FC Barcelona. That. Yes, amazing. Congratulations. The one thing also, because you are quite, as you say, a world football fan, you decided and you, you really pushed us. Uh, we needed to go to Portugal where we looked at their stadiums, but then you and I took that midnight train, not to Georgia, but along with Kevin and others, we were, I think, the entire train had COVID uh, when we went to Barcelona and suddenly in the middle of Spain, the train stopped. So about going to Madrid. Yeah, to Madrid. Yes. Yeah, no, because we went to El Clasico, which is the biggest, probably the biggest rivalry in in the world in any sport, Real Madrid versus Barcelona. I know you don't want to talk about that score, but Kevin was very happy with that score. Well, uh, it was also Messi's final Clasico in front of fans as a member of Barcelona, which was a special night to be a part of. Like Barcelona lost and, you know, it is what it is, but it was, it's a game that that world football fans dream of seeing. It's a bucket list item for life. And I saw that game when I was, when I just turned 19 years old. So it was one of the best nights of my life for sure. And like going to Madrid and going to the Bernabeu and experiencing that, um, it's it's the it's the biggest maybe the biggest sporting match in the world and I got to see it. Well, I think that's one reason why it's so exciting to have students like you because one thing we see is our program is very dynamic. So when you and other students say we need to be doing something like that, we've added that to the group. Uh, what I wanted to also ask you uh, when you're talking about sports communication, what about the the other students that you've dealt with? You've mentioned Chris is now working for SC Barcelona. Uh, what do you see that's distinctive about the Emerson Sports Com major? In terms of how it's distinctive um i well, think you've, you've produced your own show correct? i think yeah so i think i would say here um you can make you can make your degree whatever you want out of it um i came here with i came and started from scratch here i had zero connections to the industry um i had like very very humbling high school experience where i didn't have that much exposure to uh, the communication broadcasting realm and then i come here and I can go to class and meet alum and people that are working in the industry like Charles Steinberg or Tim Neverett uh, that I want to get to know and learn from. And then outside of class, there are all these organizations that I can join and I can make a name for myself with. And so coming here, being able to throw myself at these non-academic opportunities, because that's really, I think, what shapes the Emerson experience more so than other schools like Syracuse or Northeastern of Maryland. They're heavily academic based, which is fine. But um, I think being able to take it out of the classroom is really beneficial. That's what helped me get my first job at a news station was uh, being a reporter and joining organizations outside of class. What's exciting, I think, Sam, for me, and of course, we've worked with Mark Brody and others, is even though you're not VMA, uh, you've had the experience. And tell us about the award that you just won and you're going to be honored tonight with regard to broadcasting, where you'd be going up against veteran VMAs. Yes. So tonight I'm going to an award ceremony in Maynard, Massachusetts. Um, I'm a host and producer of this show called The Box Score. It's been on Emerson Independent Video for about five or six years, and it's just a long running sports show. And every time that someone hosts it and they graduate, it's moved on to the next person and so on. And I became the host last year, and an episode that we produced last semester was just awarded um, a trophy for a uh, college university sports program by. Uh, the National Academy of Arts and Sciences National Student Production Awards, um, which is essentially the uh, Student Emmy Awards for the New England area. Our show was honored and it will be honored tonight. And we go up against pretty much every sports, any any programming in the New England area in terms of um, academia. And we were the winners and the only Emerson, Emerson representatives at the ceremony. Well, I think what that does, it makes me feel very, very good about the idea that uh, what we do provide people, if you cannot major in what's an excellent journalism program here, we do give you the abilities as well as the immersive experiences and storytelling as well as broadcasting that you can win something like you did. And we're so proud of you. I think, Sam, when we look to the future, of course, we're going to see alums like Sam Sam Presti, who, of course, have inspired us. We're also going to be seeing Sam DeCoste. I'd like to thank you for coming today. Following your career is just like watching a shooting star. So onward and upward, Sam DeCoste. Thank you, Greg Payne. I appreciate that.